Located just 11 and a half miles north of Hastings, Bodium Castle is a castle designed to defend South England during the Hundred Years' War. However, it was not only meant for defense, but decoration as well. Built in 1385 by Sir Edward Dollingrig, with permission from Richard II, Bodium Castle was one of the latter castles built in England. Since it was built 30 years after the Black Death, the castle flourished with color and luxury due to the higher concentrations of wealth acquired by the survivors. This castle's style and decor was inspired by Bodium Castle. The two towers shown in front were for the crossbowmen to hold their positions in. As you can see, these traveling villagers walked in the line of fire and are quickly taken care of. Even though there is a blind spot for the archers, the villagers still have to get by the kill holes rigged with deadly arrows in front of the gate. The village life is prospering in the castle, as the owner allows commerce to take place, so he can pose more taxes. The stables house the horses of the lord and knights. These are some of the local merchants who trade basic supplies with travelers to obtain rare materials. The fields fit in this castle to protect from invaders. Also, these fields utilize the three-field system in order to sustain the soil for years to come. The crops for this season include carrots and wheat. This blue bed is meant for a nobleman and his spouse. Meanwhile, the purple cloth on the second bed reveals that it is a bed for the lord and his spouse. The prison-like apartment here with straw beds is meant for the servants. Thus, the room can only be opened from the outside. This is the chapel, including a stained glass painting of the sky and fire around the pulpit. This fire is meant to protect the priest from any disease that may spread, a lesson that they learned from the Black Death. Ah yes, the chamber, as it's called, is the reception area of any guests coming to enjoy an eventful evening of dance and jig. Following the chamber is the Great Chamber, a room for the Lord's greatest friends and political visitors alike. The Great Chamber is really just a giant flex zone. The local lord would invite people over to flaunt his wealth and show people how powerful he really is. Hence the overuse of colored fabrics and exquisite paintings, along with his luxurious throne. It also includes an elaborate chandelier. Next is the lord's hall, a dining room of sorts. However, the lord will sleep here occasionally. And as you can see, these merchants really enjoyed their feast. Now we arrive in the kitchen, equipped with a pantry and a buttery. The pantry stores goods for immediate use, and the buttery stores items for later use in barrels. The pigs and chickens are stored here because they're next on the menu, and I don't think this cook likes me very much. This abundance of logs will be used to fuel the furnaces in the kitchen. Over here are the appliances, such as the smoker, furnace, and blast furnace. And the recipe book is on the wall. The cauldron, heated by the furnaces adjacent to it, is used to stir stews. When the food is ready, the bell is rung. This is the retainer's hall and kitchen. This is where the upkeep staff cook their food and spend most of their leisure time. With only one window, this is by far the darkest room in the whole castle. Finally, a well sits in the middle of the courtyard providing water to passers-by. This concludes the tour of the castle.